lucky butt to get. So give me one second before I share the screen. So by a show of hands, how many people are a little frustrated, and this is not an in vivo hating workshop for the record, but how many people are a little agitated with using in vivo? Raise your hand. Okay. How, how many people are familiar with in vivo? Yes, no, maybe. No, okay. So it's all good. It's all good. You're in safe hands. Um, so how many people have tried collaborating and just had problems with collaborating? And it's just like, I can't do it anymore. Yes. Okay, so I think we have a solution for you. And now this is an open source program, which I am so excited to show you. Um, open source means that it is free and out there in the universe for you to use. Um, I did not create this. I wish I was the brains behind it, but I am not. I will show you the team that's behind it and give you their contact information as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um, before we get started. Okay, so this is a, we're welcome to Jigat. Um, this is your welcome session to Tigat. Let me see if I can do this. So the one of the people that's actually helped me in understanding how to get works is Vicki Rampen. Um, she's a data uh, librarian at NYU um, with data services. And the really important part of Tigat is that she's really a part of the whole program behind it, um, as well as her husband, Remy, um, who is the lead developer. So this is kind of their child, if you can say. So the agenda for today is this the welcome and the session goals. What is to get? Of course, getting access to, to to get, which I gave you a step by step guide in your email that I sent. We're going to practice with an interview guide using a code book and to get and any information that you can reach out and reach out and um, talk to me. OK, so that's um, consultations. So Cactus is a computer-assisted qualitative data analysis. Um, and it includes features to help highlight, code, annotate, and link source materials. And the really interesting thing about um, Cactus is that people have mixed feelings about using Cactus. I don't know if anybody else is familiar with qualitative research, but some people like using pencil and paper. How many people enjoy using pencil and paper when it comes, like just going old school? If I'm the only one. That's okay. I'll I'll be alone by myself, and that's okay. Um, but some people enjoy using that pencil and paper instead of using a computer, and and that's okay. Um, I think this is more of a push to encourage people to use computer generated um, assistance when using qualitative research or even mixed methods. So the current free and open access cactus programs that are out there is QCoder, QualCoder, and to get. And I will say, some of, let me also say that these slides, some of these slides are from Vicki herself. So it's a combination of Vicki and a combination of me. So if you see this, the free and open source sources, qualitative analysis tools, that means that these are Vicki slides, okay? So I just wanna let you know like where some of this is also coming from. So to get, gives you access to all operating systems. So if you have um, Windows, Linux, or a Mac, that it, to get, you'll get um, access to. It also provides um, opportunities for collaboration and, and support. Um, it does not support AV materials or mixed methods or QDPX support. So just know that anything that's marked with the green check that's what to get actually offers. So if you're working with AV materials, to get's not going to be the tool that you're going to use. So we're going to be going over um, how to use to get and describe how to upload transcription or other documents into to get system, implement correct processes to code transcript appropriately, describe the steps of how to work collaboratively with others on the platform and new skills gained to tag and annotate on documents. Does anybody have any questions about what we're gonna be doing today? And unfortunately I can't see. Oh, Kendra is asking what are QDPX and QDPC uh, for those who don't know. So actually, to be honest with you, I think that those are just the type of um, 
platforms or the operating systems that they're using within, I, I actually don't really know. That is what, that's a to get question. So I'm sorry, Kendra, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I wish I could be knowledge of all things though. So, so just a couple of housekeeping keeping things. Um, everybody's on mute right now, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to just either A, put it in the chat, or B, just unmute yourself and just say, hey, Tiffany, I've got a question about this. Um, this is being recorded. Try to use your raise hand, but I actually can't see your raise hands right now from, from the screen that I'm looking at. So just go ahead and shout out um, what your question is, okay? So what is to get? To get is a text tagging available on a desktop or a server. Um, why do you want to use to get? To get because it's available on all operating systems. It's real time collaboration. It's easy to use and self hostable. So the self hostable part is really interesting because number one, you can put it on your computer. You can download it onto your computer, or you can use the URL or which is something that we have not gone to do here at American yet, we can actually put it on the system and so that it can be hosted through American University, but that is not something that we have done yet. So don't go back and be like, well, Tiffany said that it's hosted by American University. I did not say that <laughs> for the record. Um, the data does remain local, okay? And it's multilingual. Um, so, on my screen, I actually wasn't able to see the multilingual um, aspects like for, in the settings, um, but maybe somebody else was able to see it in their settings, but this is something I know they're working out on the kinks. Um, how do you get access to get to, to get? You can do it by creating, um, it was created by using GitLab right here, um, or which is the easy way to do it is by using the URL. And that was in the URL that everybody, that I sent to everybody. So. Before I continue, and I know I'm speaking really fast, um, does everybody have access to to get? Just by a show of hands, thumbs up. Okay. Does anybody not have access to to get? And you can go ahead and put it in the chat if you do not have access to to get. Yay, that means that everybody followed the directions and I'm so happy for that. Wait, okay. no, I don't have access. Sorry, I did no! not follow directions. <laughs> where, where are they in my email? You sent the email, not the one you, but it was just sent now, right? I sent one um, yesterday. So here, here's okay. the link. I'll find it, I'll find it. It's in the chat. Okay, I'll get it, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Oh, you signed up today? Okay, no problem, not a problem, here you go. So I'm putting the link in the chat again, Danielle. No problem. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and do a sign up. Um, you're welcome, Michelle. So you sign up um, for your to get username there. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I can forward the, yes. Um, oh, thank you, Mac. So if anybody has any other questions, Mac is going to be able to also forward um, the URL to you. Fantabulous. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen, I believe, um, in a second. This is what it's going to look like when you log on um, to get your password and your login and your email. Just accept the terms of service and then register. So that's what your login is going to look like, OK? All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here and you will get a copy of my slides um, afterwards, just to let you know. So also, before I forget, I'm gonna also attach the um, document that we're gonna be working with today. Now, this document, you might want to put it on your desktop. This document um, is actually from in vivo. So I did not make up this this uh, <laughs> this interview, um, but it's from in vivo. Okay, so let me share my screen again. So when you go into 
this document, it's going to have um, an automatic highlight and it says interesting. Um, that's by default. You can easily delete it by going to, if this was interesting up here, What you're going to do is going to go to edit and then delete tag and it'll automatically delete interesting for you. Okay. I know you won't have these tags in here. I just put these tags in here. If you want, you can easily put these tags in into um into to get. Now tags are codes. Okay, so that's their worry of using tags or defining tags. Um so when we talk about tags, um, the first thing we want to do is create a tag. So click create a tag. And you're going to put right here where it says name. I'm going to type in attraction to down east. And you don't have to put a description. Some people put in a description. Um, I probably would put in a, a description saying, why um, interviewee decided to move to down east. So in qualitative research, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have our tag, but we define the tag. Um, you don't want to be doing research where you're just having the tag out there or the code out there and you haven't defined it. So go ahead and make sure you define it, um, define it. So we're going to highlight now, this is the exciting part. And if you can tell, I'm getting really excited about this. So the first thing we're gonna do is, and does anybody have any questions about creating tags before I forget? Fantastic. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at William's paragraph right here. Um, William says, I've owned my house in Straits Township in Ottawa for three years. My folks live in Samarina, which is east of where my house is. And they have been there in that location now for nine years. But they've been in Carteret County for 18. They vacationed at Atlantic Beach where my when my brother and I were in college. And you can read the rest on your own. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, I've lived in my house in Straits Township in Ottawa for three years. Let's say that I want to put this sentence under home ownership, correct? So what I'm going to do is highlight, take my right mouse, take my mouse and left click, excuse me, and highlight, I've owned my house in Straits Township in Ottawa for three years. Release and click new highlight, and then click home ownership. As you can see, all the other tags are featured here. So if I wanted to do one or the other, or and or the other, I can do that. But I'm gonna click save and close, and boom, my, my quote is now in home ownership. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, Tiffany, it's yellow. Can I change the color? You cannot change the color. Um, it's all going to be yellow. See, I, Wendy, I was in your head. Um, <laughs> you can't change the color. So it actually mimics the way that we would highlight when we are on pencil and paper. You know, we would just do paper and highlight in yellow or pink or orange. But in this case, when using to get, we're highlighting in yellow. Okay, so does anybody have any questions so far? Uh, excuse me, Tiffany, I have a question. Um, I'm unable to upload. I mean, I uh, registered today, so I don't have the email that you sent yesterday. No problem. Uh, but, you know, I'm unable to upload this file on, um, you know, to get. So I can't, you know, do what, you know, you are doing here. No problem. So is are you having a problem with the the file itself or? It doesn't let me, up, uh, you know, upload it there. So did I you download it. Did you download it? Yes, to your I already desktop? downloaded it. Yes, it's already in my desktop. I tried, but it you know, doesn't let me to upload it. Okay. That is do me one favor. Mac, can I borrow you for a second? 
by chance, can you um send Mac um a message and then Mac, do you mind forwarding that email with Williams? Um I just forwarded it to Shrin. Oh, so all right, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. So let's say, for instance, I make a mistake and I've highlighted the wrong quote. Okay. So what you're gonna do, because I highlight the wrong things all the time. You're going to highlight it. I'm going to go to new highlight again. Oops. Now it might not work right now because I've said it. Okay. Yes, I did it. So I highlight it and let's say here's my home ownership. Let's say delete highlight and boom, it deletes the highlight. Sometimes you got to play around with it. It's a little finicky, um, but that is how we delete our highlight. Does anybody have any questions there? So let's say, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this again. Home ownership, save and close. So let's say that I want to merge home ownership or not merge. I want to add it. I want to add a tag to it. So let me go back to the document. And let's say that I want to add it to attraction to down east. I can save and close. And boom, it's in two places now. Let's say that I do not want home ownership to be in attraction to Down East, okay? Let's say that I want to merge my quote from home ownership into attraction to Down East. So I'm gonna click home ownership, then click merge, and then home ownership into attraction to Down East. I'm going to click merge tags and boom, that quote is now in attraction to down east. Does anybody have any questions? So Tiffany, that's basically sure. the move function. Even though yeah. it's called merge, it in merge. effect is moving it from one tag to another. Bingo. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> okay, so what I would like for folks to do is I have given you a couple of tags here, attraction to down east, environment. Now, environment.protection, let me tell you about parent-child codes. So in InVivo, you know how we can have parent-child, if you're familiar with InVivo and other, um, other qualitative programs or, or cactus programs, what you can do is you can um, <clears throat> you can have a parent child code. So a parent is the overarching code and the child code is the little codes that go below it. So right here, you see environment and then you see environment.protection. Environment.protection is my child code to environment. So let's say that I wanna create a tag and I'm going to name it environment dot mm, dot visitors. Okay, and I'm going to save and close, and then it will go under visitor. It will go under environment. So unfortunately, it doesn't have like a tree, um, like in InVivo, it has a tree. It looks like a tree. It'll just look like this. Does anybody have any questions of what I just did? So and Sharon, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is Maria. So so what does that do then? It, but, but is that then connected? Are those two codes connected? Environment protection, environment visitors? They're not connected, but this is a the child code to mm -hmm. environment. So it's environment is your over, overarching code. 
and environment.protection and environment.visitors are your child codes or your codes that go below it. It just visibly doesn't look that way. Mm -hmm. But does the program recognize that or you know that because you just did it and, and now it's underneath? I, d I know it because I know it, that I did it underneath and the program identifies it because now let's say um, it, I, I've now, I've also alphabetized these. It automatically alphabetizes the um, child codes for you. So let's say create tag. Let's say I do environment dot animals. Save and close. It goes right before protection. So the program will automatically identify, okay, this is a child code. So I'm going to go to Jason and then Matt. Does that help, Maria? Yes, it does. Thanks. Okay, no problem. Jason? Hi, thanks. Thanks. Um, so when it comes to sort of nested or parent child codes, this is something kind of on the user end, we'd manually enter. And then when we highlight and want all those together, we would just make sure those check boxes are done so that because it won't automatically do that, right? It won't automatically do that. Correct. So let's say that um, they vacationed at Atlantic Beach when I was, we'll take this. Excuse me. Um, I'll highlight this. I'm going to do new highlight. And I'm going to say attraction to down east. I'm going to do family. And I'll hit save and close. It automatically, the quotes will automatically go in two places at the same time. Is that what you mean? Well, like, so if there was one for environment and you and you want something like anything with environment, you want that tagged. And then for the child, it would be something specific, like in order to get all of them together. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what you're I think so. So I think what you would have to do is you would have to identify it separately, just like. Um, I'm just going to pick a quote. It has nothing to do with what. So if you see how I have to choose, is that what you're saying? Yeah, like if you were to click environment.animals, it wouldn't automatically also click in environment for you. You'd have to manually. You'd I would have, have to manually, manually make sure. click it. Correct, correct. So look, there you go. I clicked on environment.animals and it only goes to environment.animals. It doesn't go to environment. I'm going to go to Mac and then Kendra. <clears throat> Mac, if you're talking, you're on mute, I think. Sorry, I lost my Zoom too far. Um, Jason asked my question, so you're good to oh, go. Okay, no problem. Kendra? I was just going to point out that if you click on the parent tag, it will show you tags for all the children as well. So because you only have the one, it's only one for show any you that one. one. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, if for example, you had other things in the other children and you clicked an environment, it would show you all the tags you had in all the environment dot categories. Okay. So you can see all the children in one place. Thank you, Kendra. So I am just getting familiar with this program as well. So, but thank you so much, Kendra. Anybody else? Fantastic. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back to not project info. Um, this. So some people like the backlight. Um, from my understanding, the backlight just grays out everything else except for your quotes. People are really psyched about it. Um, if you go to other trainings associated with TIGET um, that Vicky has run or um, some of the other people from the team have run, they have described it as people just get really excited about seeing backlight. Um, so that is backlight. That's what that means. 
So I'm going to go to the highlights. And let's say that I want to see all highlights. This is about all the highlights. Okay. Um, now let's say that I want to, let's say that I want to export, let me go back to my document real quick. Let's say I want to export this view and I want to do it in a PDF form. I don't know if y'all can see that. You can? Okay, great. I'm like taking cues from you, Jason. <laughs> so now this is the interview guide. Can you see the interview guide? Okay, great. So the interview guide and it, you can see the um, the codes. Like the first question or the first quote is highlighted and then it's attraction to down east. The second quote is, they vacationed at Atlantic Beach when my brother and I were in college, and I see my two codes, family, and then attraction to Down East. Any questions? All right, I'm going to close this. Oh, no. Hold on for one second. I closed my entire screen instead. So as I open it back up, does anybody have any questions about TIGAT so far? So it doesn't create any visualizations or anything? It's just the PDF? It's just the PDF, or you can do a, um, a doc document, or... Um, sorry. Or an HTML. So I'm going to show you how to, um, let's say you already have an established code book, okay? Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up another project. Or let's say, let me back up. Um, I'm going to delete all my highlights from here. Actually, I'm going to delete all my tags. I won't do it. It goes delete. Delete and delete. So what I'm going to do is in a minute, I'm going to put in the, um, there it goes. I'm going to put in the code book in the chat that I'm going to use for this. Let me close it. So when you upload a when you when you upload a code book, you want to make sure that it's saved as a CSV file, which is pretty much equivalent to uh, Excel. But this is your code book. So I'm going to delete all of these codes. From here, I'm just going to delete the tag, go edit, delete tag, OK.
and then edit, delete tag. Okay, so let's say that I want to, um, I want to add um, a code book, right? So you already have your established code book prior to, you're, you're going about this from the other way instead of creating codes from the front end, you're gonna create your codes from the back end instead. You already have your code book and you've already, you and your collaborators have already talked about how you're gonna code. So what you would do is you're gonna in, click import code book. You're gonna name it, let's say I've in, um, named it interview with William, choose file. And it's right here, code book. I'm going to click review and I'm going to click import. Now, right here, this is where I have my, my code and my description. Okay. And then I'm going to click create tags. If I go to highlight, all the tags appear. Does anybody have any questions on how I just imported the code book? So when you import your code book, you want to make sure that you have the tag and the description um, listed for that CSV file. Okay. And you're going to set it up just like the way that I set it up in that CSV file that I sent to you. Any questions? I have a question. Sure. Going back to when you um, highlighted a quote. Mm -hmm. And then you export it to PDF. You were able to see the tags in pink highlight. Is there a way of actually seeing that on the screen when you're in to get similar to what in vivo used to do with the coding stripes? I believe it was called coding stripes where each oh. of the, the codes were highlighted right in the copy. So in other words, I've owned my house in Straits Township and that's been coded to or tagged to attraction to Cataract County, right? If right. I want to see that visually, because I'm just seeing attraction to Cataract County, I'm seeing, okay, I've got one quote in there. But I'm if I'm looking at this page visually, um, how can I see that I have, have coded that to attraction to Cataract County? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on attraction to cataract or Katara, I don't know how to pronounce it, county. And right. then right here, you'll see it right here. That's attached. where I have to. So I need to click on so I'm not seeing it visually in the copy itself of the interview. No. Yeah. Got it. So you'll see it if you click on the code, this is where you'll see it. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. And then also don't forget. When you want to see the whole document, let's say you want to see the whole document, you'll see it um, there when you export that view. So my favorite part. All right, wait, before we go there, does anybody else have any other questions? So let's talk collaboration, okay? So, um. I know that with collaboration, it's really difficult to do it with Invivo. You can do it with Deduce um, because Invivo has a fee. There is no fee attached to this. This is the kicker. You can manage your collaborators by putting in their username. Um, this is this is me twice. Um, I'm going to remove collaborator. But what I want to do is actually use one of you as a collaborator, if that's possible so that we can share the screen and show you what it looks like. Um, so would anybody be willing to be my collaborator? <laughs> Don't be shy. Okay, Wendy, if you could put, okay, awesome. All right, I'm gonna use Mac. Does 
So what I can do is I can give Mac full permissions. I can do can't change collaborator, delete project, view and make changes or view only. So what I'm going to do is click full permissions and then I'm going to click add to project. And then I'm going to click save and close. So there is no, um, once you added the collaborator, the collaborator, collaborator will be able to see everything that has been done, right? Um, which is not always the most ideal way of coding because they can see what you've coded and then um, they're going to have, they're going to be coding on top of what you've coded, if that makes any sense. So the easiest way to do this is to already export your, or import your code book. And then you'll both have copies of your code book. And then for them to code separately from you, and then you come back, you come together. Am I making any sense? If I'm not, just raise your hand. Okay, so Mac, are you ready to share your screen? Uh, sure. Uh, what do you What do you need? So, if you could share your screen with um the document. Uh, you've disabled participant sharing. Oh no! Hold on for one second. There you go. And if you click on okay. William interview. So what I want to know is first that like in this projects tab is where it will show up because I was trying to figure out where it was. So one of these is mine and one of these is yours. And I don't know which is which because we both named them the same thing. <laughs> OK, so we'll find out. Um, Click. OK, it's this one. Yeah. OK, so this is this is the one that's collab the collaborator one. Fantastic. Then click documents. And then William interview. And there you can see that I've already coded. I've owned my house in Straits Township in Ottawa for three years. That has already been coded because I coded it. So the best, and then it also tells you what the code is. So the best, for best practices, it would probably be more ideal if you coded, you uploaded the um, code book separately, and then you code separate. There is no, and I don't like using this word, blind coding. So the type of terminology we use now, qualitative research is obscure coding. There is no obscure coding in, in this particular program. But hey, you don't have to pay that $500 from in vivo. Could you say what is blind slash obscure coding for those of us who don't know? No problem. So what that is, is um, let's say, um, and Mac, you can stop sharing. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. So what that is, is let's say that I'm looking at a document and Mac is looking at a document, right? And all we're doing is looking at the document um, at the same time, um, I'm looking at the document at the same time and I, and I go ahead and code, but Mac doesn't know what I've coded. So that's considered obscure coding. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Oh, thanks, Mac. So it just shows up on your homepage for collaboration. Fantastic. Tiffany, how do you tell which coder has coded which? Is there a way you to can't. do that? You can't. There is no way to do that. Not in um, not in this version of Tiget. They're still working out some kinks, and I think in this version you can't. In this version, you are not able to do so. So for coder reliability, this this potentially if you even want three coders, because some journals would require that for data sets. Um, 
you would code on your own. So you would have all three coders with their with their code book, with the code book, coding on their own on their individual devices. And then when if you make the data set available open source, how do you communicate to others that there are three different coders that coded on this project? Other than your word on it, there's... So, I mean, it's reliability. And I mean, I would use those kind of words. Um, in, are you talking about when you do your write-up? So if you export it, say, to Excel in a CSV, I guess you could create a column that shows the different coders. Um, that were on the project, but you want to be able to show, yeah, and yes, you could do it in your analysis, but you still want to be able to show that you've had three different coders um, on the project and which coders coded is in some cases important. Right. So what you would do is when you import or export that file, that's when you would have, like each person would have their own exported file and then you would come together and have a discussion. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. What I want to also show you is what it looks like um, when I export the file. So let's say I export the code book, because I think that's really important as well. Um, let me share my screen again. So let's say I export code book. And I'm going to do it in a PDF or CSV. So you can tell here. That instead of. Um, On the top line, it will say tag description and then number of highlights. Right here is number one. That tells you how many times or how many times attraction to this county has been coded. It doesn't give you the quote. So I just want to emphasize that it doesn't give you the quote. Okay. So I'm going to close this. Let's see. The only way that you can see the quote is if you go to the export this view in P choose HTML, VOC, or PDF. I see you, Maria, hold on. And then go here to export it. And this is the only way that you're gonna be able to see that, that code. Go ahead, Maria. It's good, you answered it, thank you. Oh, okay, see, I'm psychic. I'm working on these psychic capabilities that I have. <laughs> Okay, so does anybody else have any other questions? So let's say that you, um, you're like, I, for some reason, oh, go ahead, Jason. Jason, go Sorry. ahead. Sorry, uh, was no, that okay. me? Okay. Yeah, um, for the export, um, what are the, like if I wanted to manipulate some of the, numbers or whatever that I come up with, like what are some good export options? Just tell me about export. For so the you mean itself. like when I click export code book? No, the whole project. Like if I wanted to, you know, do something with what I have and like, let's say an in vivo or something like that. Like, is that possible? Like, yes, that would, you must be reading my notes over here. So what you can do is um, let's say you want to export the code book and you want to use another program. Let's say this program isn't working for you for some reason, right? You can export it into InVivo or Atlas TI. I believe you can export it into Deduce, but it does, you can export it into another program. From my understanding. So do you support Cyrillic? I'm sorry? Cyrillic alphabet. It's a Russian alphabet. Hello? Yes. So I, uh, can it support uh, a Russian alphabet? I mean, this. The, the, the question is about, about fonts, whether Russian alphabet could be 
you know, will it be able to uh, handle an uh, interview that's typed up in Russian alphabet, Cyrillic fonts? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. So if it's already, let's say that this entire interview was in Spanish or Russian or what have you, it's fine. It should, you should be able to do that. So let me, I'm going to actually back out of this. Let me go to home. Um, I'm going to go to create new project. Um, and give me one second. I'm looking for another program that I can easily, okay, here it is. I can import and show you how to do that. Um, so the short answer for you is yes. Um, it should be able to handle all of that. Um, So, so when I add a project, I can either read it from left to right or right to left. Okay. And then I would choose the file. and then click Richard and Patricia, click open. I'm gonna click import. Even though it's in English, I can also, I can still code in, in like, let's say this was Russian, I can still code, code it in Russian. Um, it should be in settings. And again, it's not coming up for me. When I go to settings, you should see other languages for some reason, but it's not, I don't know if it's coming up for anybody else. Um, I need to reach out to Vicky and just say, hey, this isn't coming up for me, but I don't know if it's coming up for anybody else, but you can change the settings here for language. So does anybody have any other questions? Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yeah, just, uh, I also don't get an option to change languages. It only offers English, okay. but it shouldn't matter, right? It's just identifying characters, right? So it's just identifying the characters, yeah. So let's say that you're reading in a language where it needs to read right to left when you import it, just make sure, or yeah, right to left, you make sure you import it and say that's reading right to left instead of left to right. So does anybody have, I talked to you about adding collaborators. I talked to you about the backlight. Remember, unfortunately there's only one color um, at this time, it's one color. Um, you can overlap in the words. So let's say, oh, let's say that, um, I want to do three years here, so three years, and then my folks live here, and I want to overlap from attraction to family, so I want to click new highlight, and I click, can click family. I can also click save and close, and I can overlap these, and so it'll click not click, it'll show up that family here, three years, my family um, lived in Samarina, which is the seat, in, which is east of where my house is. And they have been in the location for nine years. Um, and the actual 
the other one when I click attraction to cataract county um comes in here. Um I talked to you about punctuation and the hierarchy. Thank you, Kendra. Um talk to you, like I said, collaboration, importing the code book. I again I would when you import that code book, make sure you save it and CSV file um and put it in a folder on your desktop so you don't have to worry about it. Um yeah, that is it for me um as far as to get your intro to to get does anybody have any other questions tiffany when it comes yes. to running analytics you have to export the file and you got to run it somewhere else x you yeah. know to Excel. like define what do you mean like running analytics well in in vivo you could do bar charts you could how many times does the word text oh. Here in the interviews, if you want to run basic analytics, run reports, you know, analytical reports on um, the text itself, you'd have to export the file and run it in something else. Correct. This is simple. This is just tagging text language. Got it. Thank you. Tagging the text. <clears throat> That's it. Kendra? Yeah, so um, I just tried to import a PDF with Arabic script and shows the right to left option because Arabic's read from right to left. Um, it right justifies the document, but writes the Arabic backwards. So oh. the, the words are transposed and the letters inside the words are transposed. Um, you, uh, do you have any suggestions? So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and go back to the go back to the um PowerPoint. What I would do is I would reach out to Vicky and her team. Let me pull up their information real quick for folks. Anytime you run into that kind of a situation, this is a again, this is a newer program. Um so anytime there's like a problem like that, they definitely like to hear. And Vicky's super Super nice. Um, let me get to their contact information is right here. So I will say that I only use the um, the URL. I did not download to get onto my computer. Um, it just seemed a little bit easier for me. But if you are concerned about security issues, um, then you would definitely want to download it onto your computer. Or hopefully we can talk AU into allowing, you know, the institution to host, um, be the host for the program, which doesn't require anything. Um, so that, you know, I do know that that's something that I would like to see happen since it is open source. Um, but just if you have a question like that, Kendra, um, I would email Vicky at hi at to get .org. And they're really responsive. Okay, anybody else? So if you have any questions for me, you can always book a consultation with me um, through using the QR code or going to our EdSpace page here. Um, and that would, you know, if you have, again, TIGET is definitely a lovely tool, especially, and as Hannah wrote in the comments, um, an open source tool for the, um, for students to use especially new people to qualitative research. Um, I think it's a good like beginner beginner tool because sometimes you get really frustrated with in vivo or even, you know, Atlas TI or deduce and you've got to, the paywall becomes problematic, even though in vivo you can use it for free. Um, 
Thank you, Eric. <laughs> um, but if you have any other questions with um, Tigat, definitely reach out. Um, I'm still learning the program. It's a lot of fun. Um, as you can see, I, I have another project that I'm trying to work on in there as well. Um, do you come to classrooms and introduce it to students? Unfortunately, we do not do classrooms, um, but this will be record has been recorded. Um, so, I mean, you can send it send it over to your students for they they can look at the program. Sharin, were you able to get in? Yes, I did. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I I will say thank you to Matt. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Okay, so there has been, um, there was an update for um, Nabila put a um, survey. Please fill out the survey. I would definitely appreciate all any and all suggestions. Um, if it's to get, if it's another um, open source program, like I said, there's two other open source programs, Qual Coder and Q Coder, I believe it's called. Um, but Qualcoder requires a little bit more intense. Um, I believe they use AV. You can use AV with um, Qualcoder. I'm not as familiar with it. So it's something that I plan to be spending my summer doing um, and being getting a little bit more familiar with the other two open source programs. So if you have any questions, please, please, please reach out. And don't forget to fill out your survey. Maria, it's so good to see you. Nice to see you, Wendy. Nice to see you, Jason. It's nice to see everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. You're welcome. Bye, Nabila. Bye. Thank you so much for joining. It was a great session. Thank you. I'm going to end meeting for all. Okay, no problem. Okay, bye. Bye.